Hi, everyone. My name is Lori Wellner, and I'm the health and food safety educator for K-State Research and Extension in Wyandotte County. And today, the topic is mental health and nutrition in, in um, honor um, and recognition of Mental Health Month, which is May. And I wanted to take that and add in the angle of healthy lifestyles, specifically nutrition and eating habits. So that's what the focus will be on today. Um, and I wanted to give credit also and recognize Dr. Sandy Proctor, her name here is at the bottom of the slide for uh, reviewing the content and approving the content um, of this lesson. So I'm thankful for her for doing that and her insights and recommendations as, as well. And you just wanna make sure that the volume is turned up on your computer so you can adequately hear. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna move on here. This next slide is just a reminder, if you've been with me before, that all K-State research and extension programming is available um, to all people. All right, before we get too deep into this subject, I wanna put a cautionary uh, note out there and understand that this mental health, mental illness, number one, they are two different topics. They are not one and the same, although they are often commingled and used interchangeably. It is a complex condition. And while we know that there are strong connections between nutrition and mental health, otherwise known as nutrition psychiatry, this is not to imply that if you change your habits of eating, that all is well. So just always to seek the advice from your medical team. So as I mentioned, they are two different, um, there are two different definitions. Mental um, health and illness, uh, we'll start with the illness, but according to CDC refers to conditions that affect a person's feeling, thinking, their mood and behavior. And this can include, but certainly not, not limited to, anxiety and depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. Mental health, on the other hand, includes our emotional, our physiological, and social well being. It affects really how we think and feel. Um, it determines how we handle stress and how we relate to other people and make healthy choices. So, again, although those terms are used often interchangeably, they are not the same. You could have a person experience poor mental health and not be diagnosed with an illness. And likewise, a person diagnosed with an illness may experience periods of physical, mental, and social well-being. So I just kind of lay, lay the groundwork um, with that information. So let's really look at what the connection is. Again, like I said, it's a complex issue um, and really one size does not fit all. Um, and when mental health as it relates to eating habits and proper brain function, that combination, and or you've heard the food and mood connection, it, it all goes hand in hand. Um, but again, understanding that it, it you know, it, it's, uh, there's a lot of moving parts to it. We do know the evidence and there is strong evidence between diet and physical activity, especially how it relates to um, uh, diabetes type, type two, for example or um, our cardiovascular um, health, um, and even some types of cancers. Solid connection um, between <clears throat> those. Less understood really is the relationship between dietary intake and our mental health, because again, as I said, there are so many other factors involved. But what we do know for certain, you are what you eat, which is the second point, point there which means that what we take in is either benefiting or harming our body, and that includes our brain, which impacts our mental health and wellness. Um, the other point, the food is fuel for our bodies, and that includes our brain. So that kind of, you know, really feeds into that second point there, no pun intended. Um, and the quality of the food that you eat can impact our overall health. We know that, but that also includes our brain health, which therefore, um, impacts our mental um, wellness. So I also want to let you know that when I make reference to the brain and the mind, I'm, I'm weaving in that mental um, health aspect too. So really just try to keep that big picture um, in mind. You've probably heard it said that heart healthy eating um, is equal to a brain healthy eating. Um, and we're going to set that first one, the mind diet. We're going to table that for a little while and address the remaining points that I have here on this slide. Um, the Mediterranean um, diet we know is rich, and, and by the way, there's this really good link. I've done a program before on the med instead of meds. Perhaps you've seen it. If not, please look into that link and go, go a little bit deeper into that. Really excellent information there. But the Mediterranean diet carries with it lean uh, proteins, 
You have the whole grain foods, olive oil and fruits and vegetables, um, legumes and nuts. Um, and it, this has been consistently found uh, to protect mental health and, and even prevent and, and manage mental illnesses such as depression. <clears throat> Excuse me, Dr. Proctor shared with me an article in Neurology uh, Magazine as it related to the Mediterranean diet and its study on Alzheimer's disease. Um, and I won't really get into the results um, and, and the nitty gritty of the results and the methods that they used, but really just kind of skipped to the conclusion, which the findings corroborated the view that the Mediterranean-like diet um, is seen as a protective factor against memory decline and metatemporal atrophy. So again, you can look into that or um, I can send you some of the additional information, but an interesting article. Um, the DASH diet, dietary approaches to stopping hypertension is that third bullet there. Again, a link to take you a little bit deeper into that topic. I'm sure you're aware of this too, maybe not, and that's okay too. But the DASH has very similar characteristics to the Mediterranean diet, with both reducing total and, and the types of fat, also minimizing those sugars and sodium intake, and also the um, simple carbohydrate intake with really good focus on those whole grains. Um, the next point um, here is the sugar and the fat. And again, fat and sugar reduction are echoed, echoed throughout many evidence-based literatures on healthy eating. And that's probably nothing new, that's not an aha to anybody, but it bears worth repeating. Um, the increase the good um, bacteria is the third dot point from the, the bottom. Um, there has been an increasing connection between our gut biome, especially how a diet that's high in those fats and sugars can be a detriment to our healthy gut balance and, and our gut bacteria. Um, and it seems to be related to the inflammation, which um, can affect, if you can imagine this, can affect our cognition and our mood. Um, so again, you know, that you can kind of see the ripple effect of how healthy eating can in fact, um, you know, have an impact on our body and therefore our um, mental health. So fermented foods like sauerkraut and kombucha and kefir, can improve that good gut health and increase serotonin levels, which is a neurotransmitter that helps regulate sleep actually and stabilize our mood. <clears throat> All right, um, breakfast, of course, we know we should be eating breakfast. We, it fuels our body and our brain. It also just jumpstarts our metabolism, gets us going for the day. And we know that if you've ever skipped breakfast, how it can cause you to be a little moody, perhaps even, even sluggish and, and fatigued. You get that brain fog going. And so just, you know, really trying to make a healthy breakfast um, a part of your routine. And then lastly, staying hydrated, such a simple um, healthy lifestyle um, habit to get, to get in, to make sure that it's part of your daily routine. Because we know that our bodies are made up mostly of water. So when our water supply gets too low, the effect can be far reaching. Dehydration can upset our body's um, natural balance and which in, in, in effect can, can um, impact our um, mental, our physical and our emotional state too. So dehyd being dehydrated can affect, affect our mood, affect our mood, excuse me. So if you find yourself often jittery or easily irritated, nervous, kind of sluggish, you might just be in need of some um, good old H2O. Even being mildly dehydrated can contribute to low energy, anxiety, the feelings of ner nervousness and depression, and just you know that trouble thinking clearly. So being hydrated, um, being dehydrated can throw off <clears throat> that delicate balance between the dopamine and the serotonin, which balances in our brains, in our brain that uh, natural chemicals that, that can increase um, and really have an impact on depression and anxiety. And that comes from the Massachusetts Public Health Blog. I really like the connection with all of that with breakfast. 
Okay, so we're going to get into the MIND diet. And um, there's a recent study by, uh, from Rush University um, that identified a dietary pattern that can significantly reduce the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, even in patient that, patients that are moderate compliant to it. Um, this was developed by Martha Claire Morris, um, right there is her uh, name. And uh, she's a nutritional epidemiologist um, along with her colleagues. And really it's a hybrid of the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet that we just talked about. Um, both of those diets that I mentioned, the Mediterranean and the DASH, again, have been found to reduce the risk of cardiovascular um, conditions like hypertension and stroke um, and heart attack. And some um, researchers have even found that those, those two diets that I just mentioned prove to have protection against dementia as well. So again, keeping in mind that the MIND diet is just um, kind of a combination of those two. Um, it has 15 dietary components with 10 um, brain healthy food groups. And I've listed them here. I had not included the specifications behind each one. So for example, um, on the green leafy vegetables, it's recommended that you include those every day, okay? Um, the nuts, for example, every day. So you might wanna dig a little bit more into the, the, the recommendation on the amounts per day per week. But interestingly enough, though, if you look at that list on the left, berries are the only fruit specifically included um, in the MIND diet. And berries, blueberries specifically, um, and this is a quote by um, Dr. Morris. She said blueberries, are one of the most potent foods in terms of protecting the brain. Um, evidently, strawberries were also um, have had a high performance um, on its effect on food, on the, on the cognitive um, function too. <clears throat> and again, she re reiterated that even people that have a moderate compliance to this diet, to this style of eating, had a reduction in their risk for um, Alzheimer's disease. And I tell you, that's pretty powerful. Um, that's pretty powerful in itself. Now, not to hone in too specifically on nutrients, but there have been nutrients that have been linked to cognitive function um, and just good mental capacity. And I've listed a few here. I'll go through them briefly and, and I address the foods behind them, but not exactly the specifics behind each one in terms of its, um, how they connect and, and make a difference in our cognitive function. So you know, though the group of omega-3 fatty acids, you have the DHA, which are found in the um, pink salmon and in tuna, and then you have ALA, which are found in a plant-based food. So flaxseed oil and canola oil, and also walnuts, walnuts too. Um, the next is the group of B vitamins. You have folate or folic acid and then the B12 vitamin. The folate, the folate is found in those green leafy veggies, beans, and fortified cereal. And then the B12, if you're familiar with that, it's in, in um, animal-based foods only, but, it, but also fortified in breakfast, um, in breakfast cereals. Uh, vitamin D is next, which is often added to foods such as milk and juice. Um, and some breakfast cereals. Um, fatty, fash, fatty fish has a naturally occurring um, uh, vitamin D uh, like salmon and tuna. And then our bodies of course produce vitamin D as a result of being in the sun. The zinc is next found in oysters and nuts and seeds and fish. The vitamin C of course um, <clears throat> in many fruits and vegetables specifically in citrus and, and berries um, as well. The beta carotene is found in those dark colored veggies, sweet potatoes and spinach and kale. The selenium is in the seafood, mushrooms, unique foods with this group, uh, egg yolk, nuts and nuts also, and veggies like garlic, onion, and broccoli. And two more, or excuse me, just one more, magnesium is found in those green veggies, again, like those dark leafy greens and, and nuts. So again, there's the commonality with the, the nuts and, and seeds, bananas and beans. And, but again, instead of really thinking um, hyper-focused on each 
one of these nutrients, look at some of those commonalities in this group of nutrients. And so what are they? Well, if we were to, to label it, I would say lean meats, um, some of uh, the veggies, of course, of all kinds, all colors, including those, the deep color uh, veggies, orange and, and, and green, of course, citrus fruits and other fruits and berries, nuts and legumes. And you, you get the big picture. So really just kind of stepping back and thinking about what, what are the commonalities um, within these nutrients here. When, and really it comes in, in, in the my plate. And that's why I've included that image on the my plate. Okay, I just want to include a little bit with tips at the store. Um, we know uh, to be a perimeter shopper would keep you from, well, not always. You, sometimes you have to go on into those, um, in, enter into the center aisles, which uh, oftentimes are some of your processed foods, snack items. But on the perimeter, you have the frozen refrigerator. You've got your often um, your fresh produce and your um, lean meats. <clears throat> so perimeter shopping, bring on the veggies of all kinds, of all colors, um, try different ways to, to fix them up, to, to add a little you know, variance in, in the way that you, excitement, I guess, in the way that you fix your veggies. Um, frozen, of course, are great and also reduces um, waste. Whole grain goodness of all kinds, so keep it whole grains, 100%, so read your labels. The next point is the nutrition facts. Be a reader of your labels, follow the 520 rule, which basically is any a daily value of 5% or less is considered low. A daily value of 20% or more is considered high. So if you look at, let's say, sodium, and it's 30%, well, that's going to be high for that particular item. So, you know, you can use that in both ways. Obviously, you want higher for dietary fat fiber, for example, and um, perhaps vitamin D, calcium, and you want lower, of course, for the fats, especially the saturated fats, sodium, and those added sugars. And the last point here is just, you know, double up, reduce your food waste by using canned and frozen produce. It, you know, you can it, it, it prepare it in a, in a snap. And again, you don't run the risk of throwing um, fresh away, which I'm not opposed to fresh. I love fresh, but it doesn't always go quickly in our house. So we keep a lot of um, frozen, frozen veggies on hand. Um, okay, so I kind of want to tie all this together before I move forward. Um, we do know, okay, we know that dietary shifts bring changes in our brain structure and functioning with, with that, which ultimately lead to changes in our behavior and our mental health. And that behavior can be in the form of, but again, not limited to, decreasing depression and elevating our mood um, and alleviating anxiety. And I like this quote by Dr. David Lips. Um, he is a neurologist uh, combined with a culinary medicine specialist title. He says, achieving a healthier brain and reducing your risk of developing dementia can be as straightforward as adopting a healthier lifestyle, including healthier food choices. So I think that's a, that's a very powerful statement. All right, um, <clears throat> the Alzheimer's Association um, worked with K-State um, on providing some training, but also uh, one of our state specialists then um, created this Alzheimer's 101 fact sheet, excellent, excellent um, reference. So if you're curious, you can get, get it for yourself and there's the link um, to access that or let me know and I can send it to you as an attachment. But there are um, 10 ways to love your brain. So we'll go through these each one quickly. Break a sweat simply means physical activity. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Hit the books, learn something new, but it out relates to smoking or lack thereof. Following your heart um, has to do with heart healthy lifestyles, that whole, that, the whole gamut. Heads up is to wear a helmet when you're biking or anything else that requires to keep your head safe. Uh, fuel it right is again, healthy and balanced eating. Um, catch some Z's asleep. And a little bit on this, we know that a good night's sleep um, can, can, can be 
and so impactful <laughs> in, in how your day uh, shakes out. Um, studies show that even partial sleep deprivation has a significant effect um, on our physical health, but also on our moods, leading to irritability, memory issues, trouble focusing, and even feelings of anxiety and anger and sadness, which if any of, if any of us have had sleep deprivation, which I would imagine that would be most of us, we can um, echo that. Um, so we know that sleep is extremely important. Buddy up is that social aspect. Again, research has repeatedly found that strong social connections strengthens people's mental health. It's just good for our, our mental health. And the lack of social interactions and social relationships can have a, have a negative <clears throat> effect on our mental health, which, you know, can, again, often leads to feeling um, isolated, which leads to depression. So just having good connections, being around positive people can really help um, during times that are wonderful and times that are, that are difficult. Okay. <clears throat> So remember what I said about what's good for your heart is good for your brain. Not, not only does that have to do with um, the, our physical, act, or excuse me, the foods that we take in and our dietary habits, but also includes physical activity, which again, helps to maintain blood flow to our body and then to our brain. Uh, the dietary guidelines recommend about 30 minutes of, of moderate activity on most days of the week, so about every day. And you can look for uh, more details in the link that's provided there. Um, we know that exercise releases endorphins and that certainly improves our mood. Um, and you wanna, as you would exercise your body, you wanna exercise your brain too by adding a variety of activities to stimulate um, and get your brain thinking in a new and different way. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about, a little bit more about that. Okay, I just really like this. Um, poster from CDC that addresses the health benefits of uh, activity for adults. But so um, you have the immediate ones on the left and then long-term on the right. And if, you know, it's a, it's a mix of healthy lifestyle um, related to um, activity, also related to um, healthy eating, but also um, it pulls in that mental health aspect. So you have less anxiety, which is, is its immediate results from physical activity and brain health on the right, which is that long-term, but just a really good snapshot of the benefits of physical activity. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this, this is a power nine. Um, these are nine healthy lifestyles um, shared by people who have lived um, the longest. And this is called, it's called Blue Zones, which was founded by Dan Butner. And his findings, he built that on work that um, done by Gianni Pez and Michael Pullen, um, published in the Journal of Experimental Ger Gerontology. Um, Butner was able to pinpoint longevity hotspots around the world and identify them as the Blue Zones. And again, reflecting on the lifestyle and the environment of the world's longest lived people. And there are five, and you can see on the screen that they are marked the blue dot below the words. But I like this because it pulls in some of those things that I've talked about. If you look at this, the physical, um, well, let's start with the mental, um, the mental health, uh, the downshifting to um, find ways to relieve stress in a healthy way. Um, and again, what works for you that will definitely help our mental um, outlook. Have a purpose when you wake up. What, what do you look forward to? So again, that relates to our, I believe, our mental health. Um, and if you go on down, you can see that there's the right tribe surrounding yourself with people who support you and belonging, have a belonging to a group. Um, those really intertwine that um, physical or the mental health piece. And of course, then you have the, the um, healthy eating with the plants, more plants in the plate and drinking responsibly, eating mindfully, being intentional when you eat and doing that and that alone. And of course, moving, um, just keep your body moving. So um, if you want more information, just check out the website and the link is down below at the bottom of the screen. All right. Um, so just as physical activity benefits our body and our brain, our mood, 
Um, mind stimulating activities can also improve our brain health. So puzzles and card games and learning something new and perhaps a new dance move, changing up your routine, the way that you go to the store, change up how you go to the store. Um, and that list is so long. Um, but you wanna try to kind of step out of what you do on a daily basis. Perhaps if you, you love crossword puzzles, well, don't give that up, but just find an extension of that. Um, so I have three, uh, this, I have this included in my mastery memory um, class. So if you were ever part of that, this may look familiar, but um, I've got three points or three uh, areas here to try to stump your brain a little bit. And um, so what you might wanna do is take a look at these three and pause and see if you can figure it out. And I'll give you a moment to take that pause and then we'll come back and I will give you the answers. All right, so I hope you had fun with that. Um, okay, so the first one is you take what is unusual about these words? The words are all right there. Revive, banana, grammar, voodoo, um, assess, potato, dresser, and uneven. Well, if you take the first letter of each word and place it at the end, it will spell the same word backwards. That was a hard one for me. Okay, the next one, look at that long number there. It contains each number zero through nine in alphabetical order. So have to think about that. And last one, what do these words have in common? If you uh, take those three, they're pronounced differently when the first letter, letter is capitalized. So you have polish to Polish, you have job to Job, and you have herb to herb. So something fun. And one more, actually these next two come from the North Dakota State University. Um, so again, pause, you can pause the, the recording and um, see if you can guess this. And again, I have had this in other classes, so hopefully you, well, you may remember it, but not. Let's just do it again. All right, so I'll give you the answers. Um, the first one is, number one, are you red E? Because of the red E. And then you have the, the spaces between the coffee, that is coffee break, and you have is, 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 that is tennis, as in there are 10 is, so tennis. And the last one most people get, that is multiple vitamins. All right, so this next one, you wanna say out loud what color you see in every word, not the word itself. And you wanna try to quicken your pace a little bit. So again, the color that you see and not the word itself. So quickly at the top row, you see red, white, green, brown. The next one, green, red, brown, white. The next one would be red, white, and green and brown. So again, kind of go through that list. Try to quicken your pace. Um, kind of, it sort of messes with your brain a little bit, and that's okay. All right, so this is a list of the resources that I used presenting, putting this uh, lesson together. Lots of really good information that people have done on the connection between healthy eating and mental health and our brain brain function. And just closing this out with a, a couple of quotes uh, from the World Health Organization: "Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity." The second one: "A healthy outside starts from the inside." And next, to keep the body in good health is a duty. Otherwise, we shall not be able to keep our minds strong and clear. And lastly, the key to a healthy life is having a healthy mind. I thought that really bring, brought home the topic of this discussion. So I, I really appreciate you tuning in to today's program, Mental Health and Nutrition. And, and I hope you've gained some new insights on this complex subject and that you can identify and, and steps that you can take to maximize your brain function and your, and your mental capacity, which again, um, can benefit um, positive mental health. For more information on nutrition, food safety and health, please, please don't hesitate uh, to contact me. There's my information is there. You might wanna check us out on our webpage, our Facebook, and definitely YouTube. There's some 
um, kind of cool um, postings on, on YouTube that you want to check out. But I just want to tell you again, thank you for joining and um, have a great day.